Um, thanks to those of you who are here on such short notice and the fact that it's a Monday morning and there's a staff meeting in a few minutes, I appreciate you coming here. Thanks especially to Andrew and Quinn and Andrew's mom uh, for making this possible, uh, for coming here to do this on especially such short notice. Um, I also want to mention that uh, while I, while I remember it, that there's an annotated bibliography here for anybody that wants to see. I can make more copies of it, too. It's just so you can see what kind of sources they use to do their presentation. It's really quite impressive. During the afternoon of May 23, 1888, 14-year-old John Jones of Minersville, Ohio, and his 20-year-old big brother, Reese Jones, were working side by side by themselves in a coal mine in Shawnee, Ohio. When the 14-year-old John heard a loud noise followed by a human gasp nearby, he turned to his brother to ask what had happened only to see that it was his brother who was laying there on the floor of the mine, struggling to breathe as a 500-pound piece of the mine ceiling laid on top of him. John ran for help, brought men back, who in turn, understanding that al already that young Reese was dying, sent the younger, younger Jones boy home. As the 14-year-old would later conclude in his testimony to the coroner, my brother was lying there still alive when I left, but he was dead when they brought him home. Even though you couldn't find the sad story in a history book or even in a newspaper, I didn't make it up. Rather, it's one of the undoubtedly countless stories of coal mining and about family life in the coal mines of southeastern Ohio that one could find in looking through some of the primary sources related to southeastern Ohio coal mining that we have here in the Mon Center and that are located in other parts of southeast Ohio. We derived this particular story from using a combination of the Perry County death records and Perry County's coroner's report. Now, if Andrew and his mom weren't right here, to hear me and refute me, I'd be telling you that on one cold, dark, blustery day back in December, hot six, Andrew and Mrs. Gibbons came crawling to us, confused about their project, up to the Mon Center on their last gasping intellectual legs, starving and begging us for a topic for History Day. And then I would embellish the story further by telling you that it was we in the Mon Center, the heroic archivists, who subsequently saved the day for the Gibbons family and others. That it was we who were successful for Andrew and Quinn's great successes with their project. However, the truth of the matter is that by the time they got to the Mon Center this past December, Andrew already had a pretty good idea of what his topic was and where they were going to go with it, and all we did in the Mon Center was supply them with another piece to the puzzle. Andrew and Quinn did all the rest on their own, possibly the help with some parental chauffeuring, and, and by the way, the rest is pretty impressive. History Day competition, which used to be held here on OU's campus down at Clippinger Hall, has taken place every spring for the last 11 years down at the University of Rio Grande. It's an event at which high school and middle school students from around the region present projects on a wide variety of historical topics. The competition is divided into age groups. Students in grades 6 through 8 are judged in one group. Students in grades 9 through 12 judged in another. The competition is further divided into groups for the different types of projects that are presented. The different types of projects include exhibits, performances, documentaries, papers, and presentations. Students can do their projects in groups or individually. So it was that in this past March of 2007, all of Andrew's and Quinn's hard work paid off as their historical skit depicting the lives of southeastern Ohio coal miners and the formation of the United Mine Workers Union won them first place in the Regional History Day competition down at Rio Grande. Then they won third place at the state competition at Capital University up in Columbus, just one place shy of going to the Nationals. So the real... And, you know, what's with that? Couldn't you get to the Nationals? <laughs> So the real story here is that we have a couple of really impressive middle school scholars from our area who have taken a great interest in the life and history of coal mining in southeast Ohio and who have turned all of their hard work in researching that history, history such as that tragic family disaster which I began this introduction with. And they've turned that research into these rich histories of local coal mining into an award-winning skit. We're proud, we are proud to say that they did some of their research here initially in, Lon, in the library's Mon Center but they've also traveled all over southeastern Ohio to find little pieces of their story. And then they probably had to do the hardest and most painful thing of all. And if any of you have ever edit, had to edit your own work from, say, 30 pages down to 5 pages, you'll know what I mean. They had to take this story and condense it down to 10 minutes of a skit because those were the rules of the contest. So I'm so pleased that Andrew and Quinn generously agreed to come here on such short notice to present their skit. But more than that, I want to thank them because all of their fine work has made all of us who helped them locate materials from all around Southeast Ohio look good. So now before my introduction gets longer than the actual skit, please let me introduce Ms. Ms. Quinn Westenbarger and Mr. Andrew Gibbons performing their 10-minute skit on Southeast Ohio coal mining. And by the way, I think 
that Mr. Gibbons has a few words of his own to say about their project, so I'm just going to let them take off. Go ahead. Okay, um, I'm Andrew Gibbons. And, um, I guess I'm to say a few words about our project. Um, we were looking for a local topic, and a local librarian pointed out to us a book called Smoke in the Valley, which was a novel by um, John John Winnenberg. Yeah, it was like a fictional novel about this family growing up in southeastern Ohio, in the coal mines, and um, my grandfather, who was now 100 years old, worked in the mines for over 50 years, um, and so it was kind of part of my background. We went to. Um New Strays Girl, we visited Robinson's Cave, and miners, like, they visited that spot in some, like, the unions, the war war and all that, and our skin. We were really intrigued about the, like, the fire in New Straysville, and Robinson's Cave in New Straysville was where the two unions, unions united. Because there was a lot of competition going on between the two unions. Um, let's see, we went to a lot of places, like Murray City, Ohio, we went to a train, Coal mining museum, some coal depots. Um, I guess that's about it. Hope you enjoy our presentation. <laughs> 